Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Middletown, Kentucky. My name is Jim Cobbin, pastor here at First Baptist. We're glad that you've decided to join us for this time of worship. We want you to get your Bible and follow along as we read. Sing with the words on your screen. Pray when we pray. And let the Lord speak to us through the words of the message and the music and the prayers. Today is Communion Sunday, and we want you to get something that's common in your house. The disciples had wine and, and bread, but get something that is a part of your everyday life and bring it and take communion with us when we get to that time in the service. I invite you now to pray with me as we welcome the Lord's presence. Loving God, how grateful we are to you for your love and mercy, that even while we are separated one from another, that we are also together. We are still united as First Baptist Church, but we're also united as the universal church, all Christians around the world who are joining their hearts together on this Sabbath weekend. Listen to our prayers, our singing, speak to our hearts. As we pray in Jesus' name. Please join me in, in your homes while we sing together and worship the Lord. Shout to the Lord. from Luke chapter 24. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still living with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. When he had led them out into the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he left them. He 
was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually in the temple, praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Susan here in the Kids' Corner. I hope you're having a great week. I wanted to talk to you briefly today about the flags that I brought with me. I don't know if you remember it or not, but Monday is a holiday. You know what day that is? It's Memorial Day. Not sure if you remember what Memorial Day is all about, but Memorial Day is when we remember uh, all the people that have died and sacrificed their lives for us to live in this great country with all kinds of freedom. And so as you celebrate Monday, it may be a little bit different this time than what you've experienced in the past, but I'm hoping that you'll remember all those people and if you were here at church, you know that we always talk about those people and you get to tell us their names and what branch of the service they were in. Uh, but we can't really do that this time, but just wanted to touch base with you and say, I hope that as you have that day on Monday as a holiday from school or work or whatever the case may be, that you'll be sure and remember those people. So I brought my American flag to remind us of the freedoms that we have. I also brought a second flag, and you'll recognize it as our Christian flag, because as you know, this represents the freedom that we have in Christ and what Christ did for us on the cross by dying and forgiving us of our sins when we ask him to, and that is a great freedom. So Monday, I want you to be thankful for two things. One, the people who help us and have helped us in the past live uh, in a free country and all that that means to us each day. And then also to be sure and give thanks to God for the freedom that we have in living with Christ Jesus and being forgiven, us, forgiven of our sins. Just want you to know that I love you. I'm thinking about you always. I pray for you and your family daily, and I can't wait to see you again in person really soon. Sending you my hugs. Until next time. Bye-bye.
This is a scripture reading from Acts, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And all God's people said, Amen.
last Sunday of Easter season in the life of the church. Next Sunday, the banners on the wall behind me will be changed because we've entered a new season in the life and ministry of Jesus. In these 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus continued to appear to his disciples, to many different disciples. In many different places, we find Jesus appearing to John, Peter, and James uh, up north on the Sea of Galilee. You remember that great story in John's Gospel where Jesus was cooking breakfast on the beach. Jesus appeared to his disciples in many different groups there in Jerusalem. But at the end of those 40 days, something very important happened in the life of Jesus. Now the 11 disciples who are left, remember Judas Iscariot has died, the 11 disciples who are left have regathered back in Jerusalem. In the text Lisa uh, read, it said, wait for me here in Jerusalem. And so here they are, probably staying back in the same quarters that they stayed in during the days of the crucifixion and the Last Supper. There they are together. And they've gone to a place that's very familiar to them. The Mount of Olives. Now if you stand at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the most noticeable thing you see off to the east, if you'll turn to your left as you're standing on the Temple Mount, is this large mountain called the Mountain of Olives. Now it's covered with both Muslim and Jewish cemeteries. Everybody wants to be buried on the Mount of Olives. But in those days, of course, the Mount of Olives was known for its olive trees. And on the Mount of Olives was the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane means olive press, where Jesus and the disciples met regularly. You know, there on the top of Mount of Olives, you wonder if that's where they thought Jesus would meet them because he had met them there so often. And sure enough, while they are gathered there, Jesus comes and stands among them. Now, if you're standing here on the top of Mount of Olives, looking over at the city of Jerusalem, in those days you would see the magnificent temple still standing. Now, 30, 40 years later, the temple would be destroyed. But the temple, with all of its magnificent gold adornment, was still standing. Next door to the temple was the massive fortress of Antonia, the Roman garrison. And it stood several stories tall so that the Roman soldiers could look over into the Temple Mount and they could see what was happening there in the courtyard of the temple. And each of the corners was a huge tower. This was Roman power and superiority. Romans wanted the Jews to know, we dominate you. Which leads us to a great question that the disciples asked Jesus. They're on top of the Mount of Olives. And they say to Jesus, so is it now that you're going to inaugurate your new kingdom? Now are you going to become the king? You've been resurrected from the dead and we've seen you. You've appeared to us. So now are you going to overthrow the religious uh, bigwigs who have been dominating our lives at the, at the temple? Is it now that you're going to throw over the Roman garrison and chase the Romans from our city? I think we'd be asking the same thing. So now are you going to do what you came for? It's a little bit like our children. I remember a very long trip to Orlando where our middle son kept asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And my standard answer was five more minutes. Five, and that was 12 hours of five more minutes. That's a little bit what the disciples are saying. Is it, is it time? Jesus says something really interesting. You're not to know the times and seasons. He did again what he'd done throughout his earthly ministry so often. He changed the direction of the question. He said, don't worry about times and dates and those things. They mean nothing. 
worry about what you're to be doing in this meantime. See, they wanted a prediction of the future. What will my job be? What will my place be? Will I make a good living in this new kingdom? But Jesus says, what I'm offering you is power to live in this current moment. It's hard for me. I want to know what's going to happen next week or the week after. I want to make plans for a year from now. One of the hardest things about COVID uh, has been we can't make plans for six months from now, a weekend getaway. I want to know what's going on. And so the disciples say, Jesus, predict the future for us. Jesus says, I'm giving you power for this day. I'm going to send someone who will give you the strength to live this day. Don't worry about the next day or the day after that. Worry about strength for today not what tomorrow will bring. I will also confess to you that I've felt that pretty acutely during this COVID crisis. The deacons and the church staff and I have spent I don't know how many hours trying to plot our next step as a church. When will we open the doors? How will we open the doors? Who are we going to need to be in what role as the doors open? What if? What if? What if? What if this lasts six months? What if this lasts another year? And every time I pray about it, the decision, I, the, the message I get back is this. I'm going to give you the strength for this day. When I was a child in vacation Bible school, I memorized the Pledge to the Flag. And it has the 119th Psalm, verse 105 in it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. During all of this difficult decision-making time, that's the prayer I've been praying. Lord, give us strength for this day. Help us to know what the next step on the path is. I don't need to know three months out, six months out. But I sure would like to know what is the right thing to do now. The result of that prayer is that we increase our dependence on Jesus. I suppose if Jesus had said, all right, here's your to-do list, they would have left Jesus' side and been gone for the six months it took to do it. Instead, the disciples learned as we are learning every day, every day, I'm dependent on Jesus for the next step on the road. So Jesus said, I'm leaving you with power. One of the first words that Greek students learn is the Greek word for power, dunamis, dynamite in English. Jesus says, I'm leaving you the dynamite of the Holy Spirit. Now, really, that's the message for next week. But I'll leave kind of a cliffhanger here to say the Holy Spirit is what comes into our lives and empowers us with the strength to live for each day. And then while they were standing there on top of the Mount of Olives, the, the Gospel of Luke says... And Jesus was lifted up. Back when I was uh, studying Spanish in high school, I had to learn the passive voice in Spanish verbs. Was lifted up is a pass in, in the passive voice. Someone else did the action. Jesus did not take a running leap and jump into heaven. Someone reached down and lifted him up into the clouds. And the clouds is a Bible way of saying into the presence of God. What does this mean? 
you're standing on top of the Mount of Olives, Jesus is with you one moment, and then you see him rising into the clouds, not on his own power, but someone lifting him up. It means that God is continuing his work. We call that the ascension. And the ascension of Jesus into heaven became part of the preaching message of the church throughout the New Testament. Almost every time they tell the story of Jesus, they say God came to earth and became a man. Jesus was crucified and buried and resurrected, and then he rose to heaven. It's part of the work of returning to the Father, where there Jesus becomes our intercessor right now. Jesus returns to God. And there he pleads our case. He talks to God on our behalf. This is God's work. This was his plan. But he did not leave us alone. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. And so the tradition in church is that we wear red on Pentecost Sunday to symbolize fire because the Holy Spirit comes in a powerful way on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says after Jesus ascended to heaven, they returned to the upper room. I guess that same place where they celebrated the Lord's Supper. And there they didn't know what to do. The women who had followed Jesus were there. And Luke tells us that all told, there were about 120 people gathered in that room. What did they do? They didn't know what to do. And so they prayed. And they prayed, and they prayed. Prayer is surrender. Baptist mystic Glenn Henson says, when we pray, we surrender to God's will for us. That's what the disciples, not just the twelve, but with the women and all of the others who were the early followers of Jesus, they prayed. For a week they prayed. And the Holy Spirit came on them in a mighty way. But that's next week. Now while they prayed... They celebrated what they came to call the Lord's Supper. And I want you to get your Lord's Supper elements wherever you are and take them with us. They remembered the words of Jesus perhaps in that very room who on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. And every time you eat this bread, remember me. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, in this bread we remember the abundance of the earth, the blessings of God. And as we take this bread into our bodies, we remember how Jesus nourishes us, that Jesus is provided for us and gives us himself as our daily nourishment. We thank you for this bread that we take together. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed after the supper, he took the cup and he passed it among them and he said, I want you to drink this. And every time you drink this, remember me. Pray with me. We remember the blood of Jesus that flowed from the cross as the last and final sacrifice for the sins, not just of ours, but the sins of the whole world. God, we remember the life, 
the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And we celebrate his ascension into glory until that day that we are reunited with Jesus in heaven. We pray for direction, for courage, and for strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. The strength and power of the Holy Spirit, our prayer is, Lord, set my soul afire. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship. The deacons have been meeting to talk about the church's next step in our regathering together for worship. And they have decided that we will open the doors of the church on Saturday, June 6th, and Sunday, June 7th. In order to follow social distancing guidelines, we are not going to have just one service, but three services. There will be a 5 o'clock on Saturday and a 9.30 and an 11 on Sunday. The services will be just about 45 minutes long. We'll have very scattered seating. And because of that, you're going to need to be making a reservation for a spot in those worship services. If you're a part of the First Baptist family, you're going to be seeing a lot of information coming to you about how to do that. If you're outside the First Baptist family, we want you to feel included too. And so what I would ask, and you'll be hearing me say this more often, is that if you'll call the church at 245-7889, we will also reserve you a spot in one of those three services. Now join me as we close our time together. 
We thank you, O oh God, for the grace that sustains every day, for light on the path, for hope for a future. Continue to give us your direction as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.